You can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. They better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Activate. Hey. Activate. Oh no. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Holy Spirit. Activate. Okay. Activate. Hey. Hey. They say I ain't saved cause I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need in that stick. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit activate. If you do it right now that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh no, Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Activate. Hey, activate. hey, they say I ain't saved cause I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need in that stick. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Oh no, Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Activate. Hey, hey, they say I ain't saved cause I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need in that stick. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Oh no, Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Activate. Hey, hey, they say I ain't saved cause I cuss a little bit. But you're the only judge that I need in that stick. They always in my business cause they say I backslid. They read the Holy Bible but they ain't applying it. So Holy Spirit, activate. If you do it right now, that would be great. I ain't trying to smack this chick in the face. Don't you see me down here trying to change my way. So Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. You better get them, Lord. <laughs> Before I get them, Lord. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you can Hold on. Okay. Holy Spirit. You better do it, Lord. Holy Spirit. You better get them, Lord. Holy Spirit. Before I get them, Lord. Hey. Holy Spirit. Activate. Oh no, Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Holy Spirit, activate. Okay. Activate. Hey, activate. hey, they say I ain't saved because I cuss a little bit, but you're the only girls that I need. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Okay. Please hit the like, right? Now I love you all. Okay, welcome back to my show, the Shine Every Way Show. I want to shout out all of the new subscribers, all of you guys. We just hit 128k um today, yes, today, and um we just hit 127k like last week, or the week before. So um, shout out to you guys. Oh my goodness. Leslie Michelle, I don't care if you hit the like button an hour ago. Leslie, don't be talking no shade at me and I'm a girl. Stay with your chest. 
I see that little piece of shade, little piece. I'm a shade that she just tried to throw on my girl. No, you did. So, um, and I'm a girl. I love you guys. I love you guys. Welcome, all new subscribers. Okay, absolutely. Sit down. Don't touch nothing. Okay, the food in the back is for the unchuckables and the plastic. I've done been here, okay. We got some bottled water on the back, is about seven ounces. The moderators are selling them and they're not cold, okay. Okay, now we still got okay. We happy y'all her, we happy y'all her, okay. But we're looking at y'all like we're looking at y'all over our door, just a little. Bit. Okay. What's your name? Clearly, you don't come here all the time. I don't know who you are. Okay. okay. Well, I love you guys. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope you enjoy yourself when you're here. This is what we do here. Okay. We enjoy ourselves having good time while giving good content. Okay. Giving tea while keeping y'all interested. Okay. Sometimes this stuff gets boring. Okay. And there's a lot of content creators that are just doing the same thing all day long. This is all of us, right? We you know, have a hot topic. We'll come out and I'm a girl. I'm like, just copy the link. I'm leaving. Okay. 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 No, that means leave because I don't I don't have to be here. I don't have to be here. I don't. I, I literally don't have to be here. Okay, my internet set is uh, amazing. Okay. Um, I'm probably being reported. You know, it just is what it is. I'm amazing. You know, it just is what it is. Okay. Choppy me leave. <laughs> Yays. Stop it. No, baby Shay. Choppy means you off the rest of the day. That's what that means. It means, look at here, Sean. You gave us a cute little show this morning. We'll go finish watching that. That's what that word. That's what that word. Now, I love y'all. Can y'all can hear me? I can't help that people hate me. And that they report my channel and all of that. And YouTube be like, leave him alone. YouTube be like, he ain't over there doing that. What are you over there doing? Okay. So I love y'all. I love y'all. Okay, y'all saying y'all can hear me now. I really don't care because I'm not about to keep doing this with y'all. So um, I mean, if y'all can hear me, I guess, but not because y'all do this every time. Y'all do this every time. Absolutely. Yeah, I don't believe in wearing the same clothes. I'm, I'm I got too many clothes to be in the same outfit each show. Um, and I'm a girl. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it's it's too many clothes here. I'm like, yeah, it's just too much stuff for me to repeat cycle. Gross. So, um, and I'm a girl. So, yeah, they be reporting me, girl. It's fine, y'all. We, we we don't mind. Shout out to Bill Nix. I love you, girl. Became a member. Gone, girl. Shout out to Miss T for gifting five memberships. And I'm a girl. Uh, Miss T said, look, here, some of y'all is a little dry. Some of y'all need a little piece of membership. And so y'all thank Miss T. Put some hearts and some uh, flames in the chat for Miss T. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Shout out to Riri and I'm a girl for becoming a YouTube a member. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, the title says Diddy's G Mule, Brendan Paul arrested during raid. Okay. So yesterday when they went and tried to pop Diddy and I'm a girl, they popped good Awita on Brendan Paul. They absolutely they got him, girl. The cameraman gotcha. Okay, Diddy's twin daughters were with him on the plane. Oh my goodness, they was. We said that yesterday over here, y'all. Um, shout out to Dog Mom. She said, "Report you for what? Just you know, greatness." Absolutely, he's doing well. Get rid of him for us, please. Um, cause we don't be bothering nobody. <laughs> we really don't. Like we be over here chilling, girl. Um, we we really don't be bothering. Now who we bothering? Who we bothering? And I'm like, girl, I'm like, we just chilling. I'm like, leave us alone. Like, oh my God. So I'm getting here play. So I love you guys. So, girl, 
did it, did it, did it. So it's so much. I don't really even know um, where to start. Okay. But <laughs> um, shout out to Tub TV. I, I don't know nothing about them being over Camorros. I follow her on social media. I ain't seen a piece of them churn. Um, and I'm a girl now. Nah, maybe they she got him over there and hiding. I don't know, but last I checked, Diddy hates her. Yes. Um, the the last I checked, Diddy hates Amora. Mm -hmm. Like what a passion. Mm -hmm. Wanted to bury her next to Kim if he could have. And I'm a girl. So um, yeah. So I, I whatever. I, I don't know nothing about that, <laughs> but I, I do know that Diddy does not like her and she does not like Diddy. So I, I just don't get the whole, hey, I hate you, but here go my kids. If I hate you, my churn ain't coming over your house. They're not coming over there. You not babysitting nothing because I'm going to feel like you know I don't like you because I'm not a fake bitch. So I, it's going to be known in some way, shape, or form that you're gross. Um, whether it's a good eye roll, you know, um, whether you say hello to me and I'm like this, I know my girl, but it's gonna show that I don't like you. So I'm I'm not gonna leave my kids with you because I'm going to assume that you're probably gonna treat them how I treat you, meaning I don't like you. Absolutely not. I've never went knocked on a foe's door. Like I know we just looked each other last week at the club. I know I had you balled up in a corner. Of a, I know I had you balled up in a corner. I know I folded you um, last week at the club. But can you watch my churn for a couple hours, girl? They raided me, girl. Out of all the people Diddy could call, out of all of the family that Diddy has and the twins, he going to call an op. I guess. I guess. <laughs> I guess. Yeah. I highly doubt it. I highly doubt it. I don't know. Um, but let's get into the C sockets. We'll start um with the title, but there's a lot of other stuff that we need to get into. Um oh, ooh, that's cute. Am I? Oh my god. You should go to another show then. Like, oh my god, you should go somewhere less annoying. We'll never listen to somebody annoying, bitch. Um, yeah, you're very so much blocked. Um, yeah, I would never listen to somebody annoying. Very basic. Oh, that's right. I'm not a basic bitch. I've never been that before in my life. So yeah, I, I guess I wouldn't know what you are. Because I'm here flip. I would never do that. Like, oh my God, let me go on YouTube and find somebody annoying. Girl, please. You sitting there watching me like this, kicking your feet. Hair flip. You're welcome. Um, six four of greatness. So um, ooh, girl, you're mad. So uh, let's move right into uh the subject at hand. Diddy. Now look at here, Sean Combs, and I'm a girl. They done got this white boy. Now, oh, 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 before we get, to, well, no, let's just cover that. Did it's alleged? Okay. Now they said this. This is alleged, and I'm a girl. This is alleged, and I'm a girl. But it's not alleged because Cassie said it in her lawsuit, and so did um Lorraine. So I'm assuming. <laughs> Um, it's one of the major reasons why they popped them in the first place. So shout out to TMZ. It says Diddy's alleg alleged mule arrested on UGG charges during run-in with the feds, okay? Diddy's alleged mule, as described in a recent lawsuit, was arrested Monday while Diddy and his crew were stopped by federal law enforcement agents. TMZ has continued. According to the affidavit obtained by TMZ, 25-year-old Brendan Paul was booked on two separate UGG charges after the feds intercepted Diddy's plane at the Opa Loca airport in Miami. Mm -hmm. Namely, one count of possession of suspected snow shnane and another of possession of suspected marijuana candy and I'm a girl. Both of which in Florida, okay? Now, Florida said, look at here, y'all can't smoke no weed down here yet. Okay? So that's one of the charts because he had 
edibles, um, if you will. And then he has Snow Shane with him as well. And I'm a girl. Okay. So it said while they intercepted, okay, the plane of Diddy's because uh, Diddy's plane was leaving. Now I don't know uh, uh, what that were because now y'all know Diddy's plane is black. Okay, just like the cock that he likes during his freak off son I'm a girl. Okay. Mm -hmm. Diddy likes black cock. Okay. Diddy likes BBC. Okay. He likes his planes like he likes his men. Okay. Long and bleak. Okay. Long and bleak. Okay. It's how he likes his men, and I'm a girl. He like BBC. Big black. Okay. So um, this plane right here is white. Oh, this is a white plane. Y'all know I'm nosy. I pay attention to everything, and I'm a girl. So um, y'all look at this. Now, he is over here at a white plane, and I'm a girl. Hey. So I don't know if he was born somebody plane or gave somebody a couple dollars. Um, to take their flight, and he had the black cock plane, and I'm a girl. He had that one going on over, over yonder. Said a uh, 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 Caribbean girl. They, he said, look at here, sit, sit in that plane, take that, take that. Sit in that plane over there, sit in this plane over here, sit a bus down there, and I'm a girl. And uh, 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 call my, my homeboy and give him these few dollars. So uh, we're going to take his plane, and I'm a girl. They, they'll never see it. I didn't ever see a girl because I am not me. Okay, they just say, "Look at here, I am not me. I am not love. I am not Sean. I'm not. I'm, I'm not none of that. Okay, I'm not. I'm not none of this. And I'm a girl. So then, when he got this plane girl, because look, look at him. See, because now it makes sense why he was in like five different places. And I'm a girl. That's this blog say he over there in the Cape of Carapara, girl, wherever that's Cape Verde. Yay. And then the other one say he over there by the Caribbean girl. And then the other one say he in Antigua. Again, Diddy, I thought you was slick queer. They, they, they still, for the cameraman still got you. And that's what they were. And that's what they were. Because you left them churn for dead. Okay? Them boys, that's how you left them churn for dead, did it not, girl? That's what that worked. All right, and now we know you you want to let Quincy there because Quincy is too beautiful to you. Okay, Quincy is pretty. Okay, got a pretty mouth. All that's you, and I'm a girl. So you want to left him there, and I'm a girl because that's your baby. But um, you left the other churn there, uh, uh, uh for that. Mama D said to Erica, "You let you left my child for dead." I just leave them boys at the house like that. I'm like, you could at least call them like, look at here. They're coming. Okay, all y'all just go sit in the living room. Um, so so when they come in there, they don't scare you. You could have least something. Them boys jumping up about their bed, out they sleeping, all of that stuff. They, now you know they scared, they rich. They're not used to this, but right. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> this is a joke? <laughs> really? That happened in the hood, girl. And I'm a girl. Now, Diddy done stuffed the neighborhoods. Three of them in one day. Three of them in one day just messed up our name and I'm a girl. So, uh, just that quick. Yay. So, uh, 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 they pulled them out of the closets and all of that. The pantries and the kitchen, girl. They, they so scared. They didn't know what to do. Okay. So they had to detain him and all that stuff. You didn't care, did it? Because you still have this damn air perch with these damn churn. Now, if you look close to this picture, is that Ava in the peach? Look at here. Look at here. There go the comb twins. You can see both of them. Absolutely. It look like two camp portals standing right there. Uh, and I'm a girl. You, you see the twins. Okay. You see the federalists. And you see this girl right here in the pink to the uh, left, and I'm a girl. Ava. Oh, let me find out this Ava. 
Oh, let me find out. Now, this is just my suspicion at this point. I have no idea if that is actually Ava, but it does fit. She does fit her description. And she absolutely does. She fits her description because her description is white. She white, so she fits her description. That's white girl. So um, and I'm a girl. So since um that that that's a white girl, she fits the description, and I'm a girl. So um, gays, is that Ava? I said, oh, is that Ava? Oh, let me find out. Prince is about to take Ava to back to Prince Harry. Are you about to take her back to uh 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 what's the name, man? Uh, the black girl. You you was about to take you, you finished ruining her marriage. Is what she was about to do. Go drop her back off and I'm a girl. So uh uh, uh because we saw ho ho ho. Okay. And like father, like son, because we're gonna get into you too, Harry. Okay, and your father, because Harry, father, his daddy, the king, right now, that's passing away, going on the globe. The queen had got him out of a lot of stuff when he was younger. Okay, and underage girls was his favorite. Okay, over there in London, and I'm a girl. Over there, uh, 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 in the greats, yes. I will pull up the receipts. So y'all known for doing that. Y'all look, look at here. You, you, you come from it. Okay. And that's just what that were. So, um, gays. So the, in this flight, they was on their way. Allegedly, Diddy said that they was on their way on vacation. So he was about to go on spring break with his churn, but he left his other churn. Oh. Mm. Mm -hmm. He left his other churn at home because the dad's house getting raided. But he's talking about he's taking his churn on a uh, uh, spring break on vacation. And I'm a girl. And that's what they were. So uh, let, let's keep reading this. And I'm a girl. So it says in the paperwork, officers claim that while they were working on conjunction with Homeland Security and Customs and Border Protection personnel, they came across what they describe as suspected as Uggs and Paul's travel bags. Which they say he claimed. Now look at him. So he was about to lead a country with him. Okay. So he was bringing his mule with him. And now my girl. Now. Brendan took the fall for the Uggs. Okay. And said that they were his and that they belonged to him. Okay. So that's why they arrested him. And didn't arrest Diddy. Okay? Because Diddy didn't get arrested. Only Brendan did. So Brendan, you know, did his job and was like, look at here. They belong to me. Okay? They mine. All right? Go ahead and take me. And Diddy was like, yeah, take that, take that. So they took him and detained him. So again, the uh, person, the Ugg mule in uh, custody right now that is arrested, Brendan, was on his way to get on the flight with Diddy. So basically, he was arrested at the airport um, with Diddy. So when people see Diddy right here fat, uh, uh, walking around up here big, uh, walk, switching around the um, airport, and I'm a girl, that's why. Because a uh, old boy had just got popped. Uh, the, the, the boy he was with Absolutely, that's what that were. And they say which he and they say he claimed them. The cops go on to say that they suspected narcotics were tested and found to be legit, leading to Paul. So they tested the snow shnain and it was snow shnaining. Okay. Um, they you know they they put the little thing in and then they say, Oh, yeah, this is the real shit. So um they say, Yeah, lock them up. So um, that's what that were. So they tested it on site to make sure it wasn't no a, a, a pile of sugar or nothing like that. What they normally say it was with him when they caught him in customs, but since he is the uh, uh, public enemy number one with the elite, it's like, yeah, no, nah, you ain't getting away with shit. So he was booked into jail, but has since bailed out. Who y'all think got him out? <laughs> Who y'all think got him out? Mm. Mm. Who y'all think made sure he got out of jail? And I'm a girl. How is Diddy gonna get his Uggs? And I'm a girl. If he locked up, yes, Paul was named in Rodney Jones' explosive complaint against Diddy, which 
identified him as a close confidant of Diddy. And more importantly, as someone who allegedly handles Diddy's Uggs and GUNs. There are photos of Paul with Diddy included in Rodney's lawsuit. And hang on a picture. Hang on a pictures right here. Um, they also in a lawsuit in Namagur of, you know, the 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 Ugg mule. And now look at here, Rodney, you bug out. Um, I don't like Rodney. I don't. Um, I spoke to someone after live yesterday, and I found out a lot. A lot with receipts. Okay. So me finding out what I found out. Rodney is gay as okay. Rodney, you're gay, you're queer. And on top of you being queer, you were complicit with everything. Please stop making it seem like Diddy, like, no, he did not. No, he did not. Don't get me wrong. Diddy's not innocent. He he's absolutely perplexed. But when it comes to you, because I mean you need he needs to tell the truth. He sued Diddy before. This isn't his first lawsuit against Diddy. 100%. It's not his first lawsuit. And not only is this not his first lawsuit, he started dealing with Diddy again even after the first lawsuit. So, um, yeah, it's mighty weird that he's going around here saying that Diddy R-worded him when there are allegations of him doing that to other people, to women, okay? Of him R-wording women. And there's proof to back it. So Rodney is only suing Diddy mm -hmm, because all he left with after producing nine tracks on the Love album was a wet ass. Mm -hmm. That's all he left with. So that's the reason why he was suing Diddy. Diddy promised him a Grammy. He did. And um, the reason why he was suing Diddy is because nine of the tracks that he had produced for the Love album, he was removed as the producer. Okay? While Diddy was working on the Love album, he had Rodney there, and he ended up calling another producer and having set producer come in. So that's why that producer, which if you go look on the credits on the Love album, it'll show you exactly who that is. He got the credits because Rodney is a freak off. Absolutely. Rodney is a freak off. Right, Rodney? You like playing in the butt. You, you like butt play, all of that, you know, toys, all of that stuff, just like Diddy. Like, what do you know? You guys have a lot in common. So, um, yeah, you, you, you were complicit with everything. You were dating Diddy. You absolutely were. You were a jump off of his, you were. Um, it, it wasn't hard for you to go and get the ex workers because, again, Diddy sent you to go and get them because you were choosing, because they were for you. So, you mean to tell me you're willingly going to pick out women to sleep with, but you're being tortured too. You're being forced to. No, you did all of that willingly, you enjoyed it. Mm hmm. Absolutely. Even at the Bunny Ranch, they said that you're a nice guy. You didn't come in there dragging your feet and, and mm -mm, like how Cassie was when Cassie had to do it. Because remember, Cassie did the same thing you did. See, Cassie didn't want to do it. She literally was being physically harmed to do what Diddy wanted her to do. She didn't want to do it. She would hide. She escaped many times even went and got in different relationships for protection, like with Kid Cudi, whose car got up, um, all of that. Mm -hmm. Diddy couldn't find her for months before Kim Porter passed away. But she actually ran. You did not. Yeah, you got the boot. That was the problem. Mm -hmm. You got the boot. Yeah, you got sent home. And once you got sent home with nothing, here comes this lawsuit. Now, in the lawsuit, Rodney is telling the truth about things like this, about the underage women and men, because he doesn't just say women, he says men too. Okay, Rodney does specify and say women and men, boys and girls, um, is what he said. 
Okay. Um, so the thing, it, um, also with the, the mule and a bunch of other stuff about the pop powing of G at the studio, he's telling the truth about these things. He was just complicit. He didn't care as long as he was going to get what he wanted in the long run. He didn't. And he already knew better because he had already sued Diddy. So he, he knew better. He did. It was better to have something than nothing. So he stuck around. So this isn't a literal victim in, in a lawsuit right now. No. The only thing that he is a victim of not truly being paid for the work that he did. He is owed money for that. But other than that, no. He was complicit with everything. Mm -hmm. How was he saying Diddy was filling him up with Uggs when he was doing Uggs before Diddy? You're doing these things pre him. You didn't get around him and then all of a sudden you start doing, you're lying. You're not telling the truth. And there's people to corroborate this story. Many people, mm -hmm. even in the town where he was, uh, where he started off and like playing instruments in the church, he destroyed a church, literally was sleeping with the pastor's wife while the church dissolved. But he don't want to talk about that. He don't want to talk about that and how he's been accused of R-wording people um, and stuff like that. He don't want to talk about none of that stuff. He don't want to discuss none of that. Diddy, 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 diddy. Yeah, Diddy is an awful human being, and we appreciate you coming forward with this information, but it's not genuine. It, it's not. It's a money grab. It's what it is. And he wants to get as much money as he can so he can get the hell out of Dodge because his career is over in the industry. No. When producers are working with artists, loyalty and silence are the number one things. Being in the studio, it's all type of stuff that go on with artists whether it's family that they're dealing with or baby mamas, baby daddies, husbands, wives, side chicks, side dudes. It's a lot that goes on. So they're expecting you to be quiet, meaning what you see stays here. You think they're going to trust them after this? What artist going to be like, hey, Lil Rod? You want, no. His career is over. Yeah. He, he'd be lucky if he could play, you know, drums in the church again um after this is over with so yeah this is a for sure 100 a money grab but he is not lying about these allegations and stuff no he's telling you about the stuff that he was complicit to so you watch the police pull up all of that stuff knowing that man had got pow pow by diddy all so you did nothing that's being complicit but now on mad day since you're mad at him since he's not paying you now, all of a sudden, I'm suing and you did all of these things. Again, I appreciate the information. We all appreciate it because he needs to be exposed. He does. But it's how you go about it, how he's going about it. I can't support that. Someone complicit and mad because they didn't get a check. So they're trying to collect a check. Okay. Good for you. But I'm, I'm not supporting that. Um Absolutely not. No, the guy did not pass away. He did make it to the hospital. He did live. G did live. And G has stated that if needed, if he's subpoenaed, that he will testify. And the two witnesses, like it's like two or three witnesses um, outside that saw G being placed outside. Not he didn't get popped out there. He got popped in the studio. So um, they said the same thing, that if subpoenaed, they will testify. It's in the lawsuit. Mm -hmm. They said that they will testify G as well. G as well. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. So, again, there's no evidence thus far that Uggs allegedly found on Paul were in any way connected to Diddy. Mm. Diddy has previously denied all of Rodney's salacious claims. We reached out to Diddy's camp so far. No word back. How shocking. Let's keep going. Absolutely. Because there's a lot. There's a lot. There's a lot. So, we tapped on that. Now, let's tap into. Diddy getting kicked um, completely off of Revolt. Diddy lets go of Revolt TV. Still Black-owned mystery buyer. Um, the mystery buyer is given that he's definitely white. Diddy's no longer associated with Revolt TV in any form or fashion. The company he started in 2013 because it's now completely under new ownership, TMZ has learned. Sources familiar with the deal tell us Diddy recently sold off all of his shares to an interested buyer for an undisclosed sum. But we're told the company remains black owned, upholding its original connection and dedication to furthering the culture. 
Like we said, it's unclear what exactly Revolt went for when it was all said and done, but we're told the new boss wishes to remain anonymous for the time being. With that said, our sources say they share a deep passion for Black culture. That's weird. Um, and they plan on publicly making a formal introduction in the coming weeks, okay? So Diddy and Revolt are over. Now, the reason this isn't shocking is because Revolt had already been kind of removing themselves from him. Um, I don't believe that Diddy sold the rest of his shares. I think that they were waiting to see how all of this stuff played out. But in the meantime, kind of separating themselves um, from him, separating his name from the brand. And now with him getting, because again, it's not a coincidence, although business take time. It takes time. So if this offer was on the table, this offer was on the table when they first separated from him. I think Diddy was trying to hold on because he felt like this was going to blow over. I do. He did not expect all of the other people, the other victims and whatnot, to come forward and start suing him. And he didn't expect any of that. No, no, no. He thought that give it some time, give it a few weeks or months, and this will blow over, just like he's done in the past, but would change his name, you know, all that from, you know, Puff Daddy to Diddy to P. Diddy to, you know, love to brother love to, you know, um, changing his name and whatnot. And it didn't happen that way at all because before the elite did not abolish him. They did not abolish him. He's abolished now. He is deserted. He's on a deserted island like Epstein by himself. Okay. There will be no assistance and they will do everything to take him down. And not because of the things that Diddy has done to people. No. Because, again, they have to protect themselves. Think about the Robert Sylvester Kelly case. Remember how they kept saying, oh, the enablers, they need to be held accountable. They will be held accountable. The enablers are being charged. None of them really went to jail um, or anything like that. It kind of just blew over. And the reason why I believe it blew over is because of the parties that were involved were covering up a lot of stuff. That first trial of, of R. Kelly's and whatnot, it takes power for people to do what they did for R. Kelly. I mean, he was literally on tape. So the higher ups, the elites, they don't want to be involved. So in order to cover their tracks, they'll get rid of you. And in the worst way, in the worst way um, is what they'll do. They'll get rid of any trail or any paper trail of any of them, anything of them being involved. And they will leave everything that points to you so that you go down. Robert Sylvester Kelly, Bill Cosby, none of those people, Harvey Weinstein, Epstein, they had a team of people helping them and not like what Epstein, it wasn't just just Lane. It was so many other people, so many other celebrities and whatnot that partook. You know, in these things, they definitely did, but they got away with it out of protection. They're still down with the elite. So the elite's going to protect them at all costs. They're not going to let anything happen to them until it's time for them to. Now, somebody like Diddy, I believe the reason, one of the main reasons why he has been removed from the elite is greed. Diddy is a very greedy person. I explained earlier. When you are getting into these situations like Robert Sylvester, he dug quite the hole. He dug like 20, 30 feet. So the elite gave him about 30, 35 feet of dirt, you know, to cover it. And he covered it and he walked away. He didn't stop doing what he did. He was just smarter about it. That's all. He just realized that the mistakes that I made before, I can't make again. I got it because it didn't stop. It continued. So it's the same thing with a person like Diddy. But with Diddy, it got worse and worse. Every time they buried something, every time they assisted, he would dig a deeper hole every single time. So the Kim Porter thing, and that's going to keep coming up. Kim Porter's name, it's not over. It's not. I can promise you that. It is not over. We're getting closer and closer to figuring out what truly happened to that woman. Okay? We're, we're getting closer and closer. Because, again, her original passing was ruled a homicide. 
It absolutely was. So this is just the beginning when it comes to that. All right. But he kept digging holes and making it worse and worse. So the alumni got to the point where he got into it with Diageo and all. they're like, it, it's, it's, it's over. Like there's nothing else we can do for him. Like he's, his holes that he's digging are too deep. They're too deep. He got to go. So that's what they did. He got to go. And in the worst way, yeah, the elite don't just let you walk away. It's like a gang. They don't just let you walk away. They're going to destroy you. They don't have a choice because that's what protects them. You being destroyed. Them putting everything on you. You come forward and say anything about them, it's going to fall into deaf ears. Even if you do say it, no one's going to care. Why? Because they've made you the enemy. You've been our enemy, like the public's enemy. How you did people, how you done treated people, you've been the enemy. You've been the op, you know, um, to us. But you are their associate. You're no longer their associate. You no longer are. They're going to do everything they can to destroy Diddy. Okay? They will leave nothing. They, 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 no crumb. No crumbs. So when people are going around saying like, oh, this raid was like a show. What are they doing all of this stuff for? Diddy's rap sheet goes all the way back to 1991. Okay? And even before. But with the elite, 90s. 91. He's been around Epstein. He's been around um Weinstein, he's been around Cosby, he's been around Sylvester Kelly, he's been around presidents, he's been around kings. He's been this is a very well connected individual. Okay. So if you're going to get him, you do have to cover yourself first. I mean, that's traitor one on one. If you know you're about to do something crazy, why leave all your stuff at the place you're about to do all the crazy stuff at? No, you will get your stuff first and then do whatever you're going to do. Then blow up. Then, then, you know, do what, you know, whatever is going to happen. So when they say like the feds, like Candace says, oh, the feds are protecting themselves. No, it's not just them. It's the elite. They're protecting themselves. And the feds are a part, obviously, um, of the elite. So they're doing everything to protect themselves. A lot of celebrities have dirt, you know, stuff like that. Like people be saying, oh, Jay-Z, Jay-Z, Jay-Z. If Jay-Z is attached to anything of Diddy's, you best believe when they was in there, they got it. <laughs> you best believe they got it. Jay-Z canceled again. Jay-Z canceled the Rock Nation brunch this year, which has been going on since 2011. Since 2011, every single year, there is a pre-Grammy Rock Nation brunch. And he canceled it this year, the first year, because he and Diddy are partnered with the Rock Nation brunch. It's about meeting people, networking, creating new relationships, stuff like that. You got somebody like Diddy, because everybody that likes Jay-Z don't like Diddy, and everybody that like Diddy don't like Jay-Z. So they're bringing different type of energy into the room. So it was like a partnership, right? There was unspoken or written down, I, I don't know. But Diddy was at too many of them for it not to have been. He was always pictured with Jay-Z at the Rock Nation brunches. Jay-Z made sure of it. He wanted people to know that they were partnered. Now, he already knows. The Cassie thing was enough to deal with, but what was, you know, enough. So no matter what, he the because Cassie just filed in November. So the next brunch wasn't until like February, I believe, something like that, like February. So, of course, no matter what, he was canceling it. Now, I do feel like Jay-Z was privy to this information of them popping Diddy. I, I do believe he was privy to the information just like Diddy was before it happened. But he's not going to connect himself to that. Jay is going to say as far away from this as possible. So if people are waiting for him to say something, don't hold your breath. Don't hold your breath because I highly doubt Jay-Z will say a word, and I'm sure that Diddy has been trying to get in contact with him because he could use him. He could use him right now. He absolutely could. He sure could. Um, so, yeah, he's it's the chairman or whatever. As you know, Diddy has been inactive with the network since stepping down as chairman last November. 
and Cassie. Um, and his last order of business was being notified of the sale, which were, we're told just went through this week. We're told it was an amicable deal and everyone's happy. Lies. Per our sources, were both CEO Datavia Samuels and Chief Brand Officer Dion Graham will remain in their current positions and assist the owner while the ink dries on the contract. Another thing, we're told there be there will be no major changes to staffing or production for Revolt TV employees. Yeah, so do he still own it and just took his name out? Y'all just coming forward to because that's what it's given. It's given. Did he still own it? And um. Because all the people he hired are still there. If you're coming in with a whole new owner, I will want my own staff or I will want certain people stepping down and putting them, you know, because I wouldn't want to just like fire them, you know, and whatnot. But if new management is taking over, you have every right to bring your own team. You you, you can't tell a person like, because if they have a team and they're buying a company, are they supposed to fire their team? Or is their team supposed to come over and work for them? Um, so I'm confused. Um, everybody keeping their jobs. The only thing that changed is we no longer deal with Diddy and we have an anonymous, <laughs> anonymous. Why wouldn't you want to, if I was buying Revolt TV, I wouldn't care about Diddy's image. What would that have to do with me? That's him. I wouldn't care. His decisions don't reflect what we have going on. If anything, at this point in time, it's dire for the new owner to be showing face. Like you should be showing face. You should be letting people know, look, I'm not Diddy. I have, this is a whole new company. Hello. Hi everyone. I'm the new owner. Cause then you get to remove Diddy's face truly from the brand. You're saying you're anonymous. The whole, the same staff is staying. The only thing that changes is that Diddy is no longer associated. And we're supposed to believe that. So this anonymous person It's given it's still Diddy. He just got somebody because he is he's known for not having certain things in his name because of what his name brings. Mm -hmm. He has houses and um some of his baby mama's names and cars and stuff, but they belong to him. Mm -hmm. Like 100 percent So he's known for doing that, putting stuff into other people's name. So are we sure? There's a new owner, or are y'all just did he trying to save face? Because he still wants um Revolt TV to be successful, but he knows it won't be if he is connected to it because that's what it's giving. That is definitely what it's giving. That is weird. But moving right along. So allegedly, did he step down or doesn't own Revolt anymore? He has nothing to do with it. I don't know if I believe that, but I guess time will tell. I guess time will tell. All righty. Moving right along. So shout out to Gossip in the City. Um, this was Diddy spotted walking around the airport. Okay. Now, he has on the same attire that he has on in the... Hold on, I can pull that back up. The TMZ, when they caught pictures of him at the airport when the Brendan person um, was getting arrested. So if you look here, Diddy has on a black hoodie, but he still has on the same clothes. Only thing different is that he doesn't have one hoodie. So, yeah, they're the Combs twins are right there. You can see uh, one of them, her sunglasses on, her braids, and then the other one is right next to her. And then there's this girl that could possibly be Ava. I don't know if it is. I'm not, you know, saying like that's Ava, but it could be. Um, because he said he was going on vacation. He said spring break with his kids. Ava is considered one of his kids. So, if this is another girl. Why would he say that he was going to make a spring break with his kids? Yeah, I did zoom in. You, it's. Let me show you. Let me show you what I mean. The picture is taken far back, so even if you zoom in, it's still like pixelated. You still you can't like see see. The only way you know that this the Combs is twins is because you got to know what they look like. So if you know what the Combs twins look like, you know that's them. But the young lady with the side profile, it's pixelated. So you really can't tell who it is. It's hard to tell who it is. So I would rather just be like, I, I don't know who it is. I must, I can guess. If I had a guess, I would say Ava. But I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know if that's her. So blowing the picture up, it doesn't do anything. It's just more pixelated because I did it on my phone and you know, because I'm like, who is that? You know, I'm just like, who is this girl? Um, and I'm a girl, but she and they're not named um, in the article, but you can clearly see that those are the Combs twins. Hold on, let me finish. Actually, let me pull up this article on TMZ because Diddy says that he had no idea right here. He said he had no idea. Diddy never saw feds coming. Investigation raids came as a surprise. Lies. Lies. Diddy had no idea he was on Uncle Sam's radar before federal agents came storming through his front doors, which is interesting considering the severity of the allegations he's been facing lately. Sources with direct knowledge tell TMZ that the bad boy founder and his team were completely in the dark about what was coming Monday. Namely, the fact Homeland Security was coordinating two separate raids on both coasts, one in L.A. and one in Miami. While some might have suspected Diddy was privy to the situation, on account of him being stopped on the runway of the airport in Miami, we're told that's simply not true. We've been told that he was he was with his family when agents rolled up on him at the Miami Opaloka Executive Airport. In fact, our sources tell us Diddy was ready to enjoy spring break with his kid, a couple whom are still in high school. This photograph right here. Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. So Diddy was with his children. I did say yesterday when we um started talking on is it who hold on um are we gonna watch this stuff so much because somebody just asked a good question um ava is not like a blind i don't know like in this picture it because this is from 2023 so if people are asking if her hair is blonde because of that, because she's been a brunette. So she's been a brunette as well. So I don't know if it's if she dyed it. You know, they they do that. <laughs> Girls do that. Um, they they dye their hair. So um yeah, and then that most recent pick that she had took with the twins. Hold on. Right. See right here, her hair's dark. Right here, her hair's dark. So she, I don't know. She goes back and forth. I, I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But um, that's why I said she could definitely fit um, this description still because by height and body she that could absolutely be uh, ava that could definitely be her so i don't know if it's her i'm not, I'm not saying it's her I'm, I'm not i'm just saying it could be because he said he was going to spring back with his kids and he considers ava his kid because she, her last name is combs he said he adopted her and she even identifies as combs her last name is combs so yeah mm -hmm. absolutely absolutely so yeah they they're saying diddy didn't know i do not believe that but okay um that he didn't know but he was um leaving with his children so that's what i said when people are like oh well where is she where is she they were saying yesterday oh they were with kimora they were with kimora i'm like no he don't like her and i could see the twins being with him because they usually are they're the twins are somewhere close to Diddy and now his third daughter too. Um, they're usually somewhere close to him. The, even the last, um, when you pull that up too, the last photograph that he posted was with his daughters, his three daughters. So they are always near. They he don't go too far from those twins. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. Please hit the like. So he don't go too far from those twins. Um, let me get some shout out. Shout out to Bella Nix. 
Shout out to Miss T. I think I shout out to y'all, but I'm going to shout y'all out again. Um, shout out to Riri for becoming a member. Shout out to, oh, my baby. Shout out to Down the Rabbit Hole News. I love you, sweetheart. Y'all make sure I get over there and subscribe to my sweetheart. Down the, Rabbit, uh, down the Rabbit Hole News. Love her down. Thank you so much, sweetheart. Shout out to SNW. Thank you for all of your hard work on this investigation and updates. I've been watching the show more than the news. Oh, oh my God. Thanks for coming. Thanks for being here. Thank you for the super sticker as well. You're so sweet. Um, thank you. So, yeah, he don't go far from these girls. So that's why I'm just like, well, it's a high probability that they were with him wherever he was, because who knows uh, where he is, but he wasn't in California. And I don't believe he was at the Miami house because he wasn't there during the raid. So and then people are saying, like, oh, he didn't abandon his kids because he his sons because he was in. Florida and his sons were in California. He still could have called them. He still could have called them and gave them the thumbs up. And then on top of that, him could have calling them and giving them the thumbs up. Did he have cameras in all of the rooms? All of the rooms, including his son's rooms. So uh, we have to stop looking at the sons, all of his children. Like they have choices in what go on. They don't. His children in ways are prisoners. They are. Mm -hmm. Correct. Mm -hmm. It's very controlling of them. Um, yeah, all of from what I was told from the when the police were in there, when it, well, police um homeland security homeland security. The reason it took them a while to collect because they took pretty much everything electronic. Allegedly, each room had a camera in it. Each room. That's a big mansion. So it's going to take time to get all the cameras. So each one. So it wasn't just like in the entryways and um, in the kitchen, the living room. You know, those are places I feel like you should keep cameras. You should keep them in all those places. But in people's bedrooms, uh, there was cameras in bedrooms and the bathrooms it, everywhere. Everywhere. So that's how he would watch, you know, like Cassie, you know, all of them when he was with those people. He knew exactly where they were at all times. It's the same thing with his children. Same thing. That's why Diddy won't like allow them to have any kids. Or anything like that. Because when Justin got winter pregnant, he was like planning on being a father. Diddy and Misa, his mother, said Justin Combs said that he couldn't be. Mm -hmm. They brought um Winter to a room, it's in her book. They brought Winter from the Backers Club to um their hotel room, and Misa and Diddy were in there, and she came with Justin. And they coerced her into getting to aborting the mission, to going and getting rid of the child. So she did. Mm -hmm. She said it was one of the hardest things she ever did. But um, she was basically saying like how Diddy and Misa were coming at her. It wasn't like a choice. It wasn't like, you know, you should think about, no, nah, it's like, this is what you're going to do. We're going to take care of it. We can actually go do it right now. If you free, we, we can go do it right now. So yeah, Justin was supposed to have, was supposed to have a child, and she's not the only female. She's not the only one. There's been a few girls that have been pregnant by the Combs boys, and they're not allowed to keep their children. Mm -mm. No, um, I believe they're not allowed to until like Diddy feels like whoever they're with it is worthy. But to him, because mm -mm. he made Winter got rid of that, he made sure she got rid of that baby immediately. Um, and Misa as well. So Misa is not innocent. Like when it comes to this whole protecting um, Justin, it's like, girl, please. I don't know if it was given, I ain't ready to be a grandmother. But um, yeah, you were in that hotel room with Diddy, convincing Winter to get rid of her child. And she did. She sure did. She got rid of her baby because they told her to. Um, not because she wanted to, because they told her to. Um, but let's keep going. So shout out to Winter. Love her. That was a really good book. 
Um, she has another book, I think, um, that's coming out too. So yeah, it was, it was good. It was really good. Maybe we should read. Yeah, maybe that should be our first book club. Maybe we should read Rinse's book. So yeah, move right along from that. Um, let's get into Diddy's electronics reportedly seized in Homeland Security raid. According to reports, Diddy's electronic devices have been seized by federal agents after the Department of Homeland Security raided his homes in Los Angeles and Miami. Now, there's rumor going around that a bunch of, um, like, porn was found. I don't know about that yet. I, I don't know. We'll, we'll keep our eye out on that. Um, I mean, it could be possible. I, I, I don't know. But I haven't seen anything solid of truly the list of stuff that um, they have. We haven't seen a list. Now, we know some stuff was confiscated because, again, it was a raid. Um, but I don't know nothing about that. I have no idea. Um, but we'll, we'll, we'll keep an eye out for it. But I, I think that they may have found what they were looking for. And I think now they're just waiting on the green light to go and get him. Um, I think they're just waiting on the green light to go and get him. I don't think he had enough time to delete things because he's making it seem as if he had no idea that they were coming, that um, the Homeland Security coming to his home, he was just shocked, um, basically, as the rest of the world. But um, so maybe what he had on him, what he had on him, but you know, a person like Diddy's very cocky, so he could have uh, left it because he would. I, so yeah, I don't see him getting rid of much. I, I really don't. I, I don't think he had enough time um, to do any of those things unless he knew about the raid days prior, which I doubt because usually when the warrant is submitted, when it's accepted, they move immediately. So them applying for the warrant, I think that is recent. So how can you know about a warrant before it happens? Um, yeah, so, but it's Diddy. So you never know. You never know. Did we read this? Okay, sorry. Okay, we just read that one. Okay. So Diddy's Caribbean flight interrupted after Homeland Security stopped him at the airport. Here's what triggered the feds to seize his phones and other electronics during the raid, okay? So in this list of stuff that's out here, I don't see nothing about any P-O-R-N. I, I don't see anything about that. Please hit the like, please hit the like, please hit the like. So here's a list by the Atlanta Black Star of the stuff. You know me, I like to deal in receipts, deal in facts. Federal agents have cast a wide net around Sean Diddy Combs and individuals believed to be involved with or knowledgeable of mounting claims against the embattled star. With multiple cases accusing him of misconduct and operating under illicit business pretenses, several electronics were seized from his homes in Los Angeles and Miami. And reportedly directly from the 54-year-old himself during simultaneous raids of residences and an encounter with law enforcement at a Florida airport on March 25th. It's speculated officials were searching for incriminating evidence in association with numerous lawsuits presented against the rapper. Droves of Homeland Security personnel and local police gained entry into the disgraced moguls, homely homes, and Star Island estates where items were retrieved as part of an ongoing investigation into trafficking allegations laid out in four different lawsuits filed in Southern District of New York. The agency released the following statement to the media earlier today. Homeland Security Investigations, New York executed law enforcement actions as part of an ongoing investigation with assistance from HS HSI Los Angeles HSI Miami and our local law enforcement partners. We will provide further information as it becomes available. As his homes were being raided as part of a search warrant execution, Diddy encountered law enforcement who seized his phones at a Miami Opa Loca executive airport. According to multiple reports, TMZ reports that he and his travel companions were stopped on the tarmac as they prepared to board a private flight for spring break and i'm a girl the raids allegedly blindsided diddy and his team his sons justin combs and christian combs have reportedly been detained at the rapper's la mansion as the raid took place 
at least one of the former billionaire's associates, Brendan Paul, was arrested at the same airport that day for possession of Snow Shane and marijuana. Now look at here. For the people that were saying, oh, he was not at the airport. He was arrested in another place. No, he was not. He was arrested at the airport. He was getting on the flight with Diddy. He was leaving with Diddy. Okay? That, that's what that word. Because so, it is giving mule. One thing, too, that needs to be elaborated on, we have not, well, the, the lawsuit of the girl that said that she was a teenager and Diddy have flew her to New York and whatnot, everyone in the lawsuits have different information. And with them having different information, they also have receipts backing what they are saying. So they're taking the what's in the lawsuit, the factual information, that is given to them, and then they're going to research it. So even if the victims aren't telling the truth about what Diddy did to them, they are telling the truth about other things because that hasn't been proven, okay? Um, Cassie settled and the, because there's two lawsuits. Well, is it two? Yeah, two. No, four, four um, that Diddy is facing right now, four lawsuits. So all of those lawsuits, including um, Lil Rod's, all have substantial evidence against Diddy breaking the law, committing crimes, whether it's trafficking, um, all type of stuff, all type of stuff, spiking drinks and stuff, giving them to underage people, all type of stuff um, that they are alluding to. There's other things as well. All this KVD trial, there's a bunch of other stuff that's going to come out too. So. This is big. Y'all, we thought that the takedown of Bill Cosby, the takedown of Harvey Weinstein, the takedown of... No, this takedown is going to be massive. This takedown is going to be something different, something we've never seen. The likes of something we've never seen before. There's going to be so many people named and Diddy is going to sing like a canary. Diddy is going to sing like a canary. But the crazy part about it is they're only going to go after the people that he announces that's already on their list. So if he announced people that's not on the elite list, they're not going to care. They're, they're, they're not going to care. Um, and they may not even let him speak when it comes to court. They may not even let him talk. They may not even let him testify. Nothing. Um, just the prosecutor against him. So this is going to be big. When I say this is just the beginning, oh, this is just the beginning. Just the beginning. Um, you already got people on his side in these lawsuits that are taking immunity to be dropped from the lawsuits to test to, to testify against him. Like this is big. This, this is like this is massive. So um allegedly while Diddy was at um on the tarmac when the Homeland Security put him over, we'll pulled him over. Uh, stop the plane from leaving. They confiscated his phones. I guess he had multiple phones, and they took them all. So <laughs> this is not good. The agency. Be, what, did we ever read that? Okay, because, okay, yeah, we ever read that. Um, the raids allegedly blindsided Diddy and his team. His sons just we read that too. Um, the Miami Herald reports Paul was freed on a twenty five hundred dollar bond after being held at the Turner Guilford Knight Correctional Center. Paul is also labeled as an alleged mule for Diddy in a lawsuit filed by music producer Rodney Lil Lorad Jones. It is unclear at this time if Paul's arrest is connected to the federal investigation. Um, at this point in time, I don't think it was. I think they just popped him because he had like Uggs on him. But you're giving them everything they need because you're listed inside of the lawsuit, Brendan, as somebody that totes a lot of you know, drugs around and they pull up on you, they catch you with what you're being accused of in the lawsuit. You're popped. <laughs> you're popped. You know, they, this, they're just making the lawsuit more true, more factual as they go along. So even if he didn't have any proof that this guy, Brendan, if he didn't have any receipts to say that Brendan like those pictures, if he didn't have that, he wouldn't have even needed it. 
<clears throat> if he just said he pedals the Uggs, that would have been enough. That would have been enough. He wouldn't have had to say anything else. That was enough right there because you literally proved their point. Absolutely. So let's keep going. I highly doubt that he didn't know anything. You're lying. I, I don't believe you. I, I don't believe you. I don't believe him. So uh, 50 Cent put up, anybody seen Jay, LOL. Puff said he uh, Ninja ain't answering his phone, LOL. So, of course, Jay-Z wants nothing to do with this. If Diddy is calling Jay-Z, which I'm sure he has, Jay-Z is, mm -mm. Jay-Z probably changed his phone number so that he does not have to call him. I mean, worry about him calling him because it is a wrap for Diddy. When I say it is O-V-E-R, it is O-V-E-R. So everyone was wondering, what was it supposed to say yesterday? Yeah. Um, Young Miami says, right here, what's up? When everyone's like, where's Carisha? Where's Carisha? Where's Carisha? Carisha, you in this lawsuit, girl. And not just because you're the cousin of, you're in the lawsuit for other reasons too, sweetie. So you better lawyer up. Lawyer up, girl. Talk about some, I'm here. Okay, girl. I hope you're here with a criminal defense attorney. Diddy is accused of harassing Lil Rod's eight-year-old daughter. Producer accuses Cuban Gooding Jr. of touching and, yeah, following his legs and upper inner thighs near his groin. Okay? Now, let me pull up my IG. Okay? Because I posted, and I'm a girl, the complaint that we read yesterday. Okay. Now, yesterday we read on here that Tyrone Blackburn, which is Lil Rod's attorney, had submitted this, well, basically like update slash complaint to the court. All right. This is what he said. Okay. Now, is it Oatkin, the judge, J J Judge Oatkin, whatever? Okay. Um, <laughs> I am writing to provide your honor with an update regarding the above referenced matter on behalf of the plaintiff. On March 21st, 2024, plaintiff entered into an agreement with defendant Ethiopia Habanavarium. Sorry. Under this agreement, in exchange for a declaration that will be appended to the forthcoming amended complaint. The plaintiff has agreed to dismiss all claims against Ethiopia with prejudice. So what this is stating is Ethiopia has been removed from the lawsuit. The reason she's being removed from the lawsuit is because she's agreed to testify on the plaintiff's behalf. Okay, that's the deal. They, 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 they're, that's the deal that they're exchanging. I'll take you off the lawsuit if you testify on my behalf as a witness, because she is a witness. That's why he's suing her in the first place. Okay, that's why she's added on here. She agreed. She said that she will testify. Ethiopia, she said that she will testify. And I can bring up, hold on, bring up his lawsuit. So I can show y'all who Ethiopia is. Hold on. Let me pull it on up. Let me pull it on up. Pull it on up. I'm Harry. Okay. The, oh, Lord. The Stephen J. Parr. Um, here is Ethiopia. Wait, that's not her. Right here in the middle. This is Ethiopia. So Ethiopia, Habtermerium, Hab Habtermerium, I hope I'm saying that right. It's really pretty. Um, she has been removed and someone else did too. Was it Chris? It was either Christina or Lucian. Let me look and see. Because she wasn't the only one that was removed and that agreed to testify against Diddy. Okay. She is not the only one. But wait, there's more. Okay, so. Okay, under this agreement, in exchange for a declaration. So, yeah, it, it's, it's about to go down. Furthermore, the plaintiff has elected to dismiss the claims against Chalice, 
record studio without prejudice. So same thing for them. The decision enables the plaintiff to refile these claims in Los Angeles, California, where CRS is headquartered. These dismissals are made pursuant to FRCP. Yeah, I'm not reading on that. Of federal rules of civil procedure. Although they have been in consistent contact with this writer through threatening emails and letters, the remaining defendants have yet to appear in the case. Instead, defendant Sean Combs, through his representative, has engaged in concerning behavior, including manufacturing stories about the plaintiff on TMZ and dispatching his agents to harass plaintiff's eight-year-old daughter, the mother of his child, and ex-spouses, all of whom have expressed fear of potential harm by defendant Combs. Moreover, defendant Sean Combs has attempted to contact plaintiff through third parties to persuade. Plaintiff to terminate the writer and hire counsel who, has, who he has a relationship with. So... Which I don't know what's the big deal because they've done this before. Diddy bought out his um, attorney when he sued him the first time. So um, he was just trying to do it again. Diddy reaching out to Little Rod. Little Rod is um, with a settlement. So he has been sending people to harass. But on top of that, he has sent settlement agreements to Rod. And allegedly, they sum from $1 to $10 million. Rod has turned the settlements down. So did he gonna have to super come out of pocket or take it to court? He gonna have to, and at this point in time, I think Diddy, because he's losing a lot of business, right? The elite is cutting him short. So with the elite cutting Diddy short, there's going to be at this point more money coming out than coming in when he has allegedly paid Cassie upwards of over $100 million. Now, Diddy is a rich guy, but he's no billionaire. So it's getting it to the point to where there's going to be way more money coming out than in. It takes a lot of money to provide set lifestyle that Diddy has. But when you have a lot of money coming in, it's easy for it to go out. Mm hmm. It's easy to waste money buying stupid things, mansions, cars, this, that. No big deal when you have a lot of money coming in. The problem is, it's no different than y'all. If we're living in our day-to-day -day life and we have a lot of money coming in, we're going to spend more money. That's why they say more money, more problems. Okay? Because that that's what... No, Diddy's not a billionaire. Diddy is not a billionaire. Um. So with there's more money coming out than coming in. The sum and the funds are going to dry up. And quickly, you have to think about the type of lifestyle he's leading. It's millions, I'm sure, or at least hundreds of thousands of dollars alone just paying like property tax on the properties that he owned. And the mansions are not the only properties that he owned. He owns property in different countries, you know, and stuff like that. It takes a lot of money um, to live the type of lifestyle that Diddy lives. Not a cheap lifestyle. OK, just taxes alone, you know, it's crazy each year, <laughs> you know. Um, so, yeah, before and because a person will say, like, oh, well, did he got a lot of money? Did he? Yeah, he does. But paying all of these attorneys, and all, he has one of the best uh, legal teams in America. You think that's going to run cheap? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm a girl. We didn't say Diddy wasn't a millionaire. We say he's not a billionaire. He's not a billionaire. No, Diddy is not. No, he is not a billionaire. You can go look anyway. Forbes is the number one place to look when you're looking on that type of status because their information is um, determined through the IRS and um, summaries of what banks post. So that's why people go to Forbes because their information is the most accurate. If you go to Forbes, Diddy is not. A billionaire. We didn't say he wasn't a millionaire. He is. He's not a billionaire. Okay. And if you're giving away hundreds of millions of dollars and you're not a billionaire, your well will run dry. R. Kelly was a rich man too. He's very rich. He sure was. Until that well ran dry. The top operation that um, Robert Sylvester had, it would take millions to run. The same thing with Diddy. It would take millions 
to run the type of operation that was going on. Like that's not going to be a, a couple hundred of a hundred thousand, no, that millions. It takes millions to do um what Diddy has done, throwing all those parties and all of that stuff. Those parties were upwards of millions of dollars just to throw an event, you know. So um yeah. Absolutely. But yeah, he's not a billionaire. He was on his way. He was well on his way. Um, the marijuana dispensaries and the locations that he had bought in the New York area, that was going to bring him into the million or billionaire um, neighborhood. He was literally about to enter it. And then he messed up with Diageo because Diageo was the bulk of Diddy's millions. Diddy made hundreds of millions of dollars off of Ciroc. And the, the, the De Leon, is how you say it, that's gone. Mm -hmm. Revolt TV, he was making millions of dollars off of that with Carisha Please and other shows. That's gone. The dispensaries, the locations that he was partnered with. And I'm a girl. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Having a net worth of a billionaire does not make you a billionaire. Diddy is not a billionaire. He's never been on a billionaire list. Shut the up. <laughs> like, you look and sound dumb. Like, drop the receipt. My IG is Sean W. He has never been a billionaire. He was on the way. Having a net worth does not make you a billionaire. Jay-Z is a billionaire. He's not worth a billion dollars. He's a billionaire, meaning multiple, or on his way to multiple, already has multiple. Rihanna is a billionaire because she's worth more than $1 billion. Her net worth is not $1 billion. Like, you're weird. So yeah, he was in the ballpark of billionaire, but he has never actually had $1 billion. Jay-Z could go take $1 billion out of the bank right now. Diddy has never been able to do that. Rihanna could go take $1 billion out of the bank right now. Diddy has never been able to do that ever no if you look diddy up he's multi-millionaire it don't say billionaire anywhere he's not a billionaire uh -uh. the reason why forbes had to retract kylie jenner when they first made her uh, put her in there and she was mad that she wasn't uh listed in there is because her net worth was at a billion kylie's cosmetics she did not have a billion dollars in the bank that's why they popped her. And Kim Kardashian basically borrowed her $200 million so that she could hit the billionaire block. All because they was pressed because Rihanna had become a billionaire first. All because they was pressed. Because Fancy Beauty beat um, Kylie Beauty. Because Fancy beat her. So they were trying to hurry up and rush her to the billionaire threshold because Rihanna was about to hit it. So Rihanna hit it successfully. <laughs> Successfully. So in Diddy's lifetime, has he technically, like net worth wise, been a billionaire? Yes, but he's never had a billion dollars. No, he has not. Jay Z is worth more. He's a multi billionaire. Beyonce ain't even a billionaire. She's not. She's close. She's on her way. By act three, she'll probably be one. And when she just made a half a billion on the tour, she may have a billion dollars. Is she on her way? But is she not there? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. Mm -mm. No. No one says when they say when they talk about Diddy, they don't, no one says billionaire Diddy. No, nobody said that. Who? <laughs> Where they say that at? Mm -mm. He's not a billionaire. Billionaire Rihanna. She's a billionaire. She is. Even if she drops underneath, she's still, her net worth is going to, she's still going to be fine. Like, But she's worth multi, not just one. She's had a business alone that has surpassed a billion dollars. Not what she's made in a lifetime, what she's accumulated over time. No, just one business. A business made her a big, Fenty Savage, uh, that made the woman a billionaire. Not her music, not, no, no. Then Rihanna went bankrupt because of her music. Yeah. Rihanna was almost poor because of her music. Mm -hmm. Indebted to all of these labels and all. Yeah. She's almost poor. 
like had nothing. She was almost TLC in the situation. Absolutely. And again, y'all wonder why she ain't jumping in the studio making no album. Unless it's independent. That'll probably be the only way she do it. Girl, independent. I um, mean, I'm a girl. So yeah, he has definitely been threatening um, her. Yeah, we're going to come back um, the next live and we're going to talk about the whole Prince Harry stuff. It's just way too much to be putting all in one live. Um, it, it's, it's just way too much. So um, yeah, so again, yeah, Diddy's not a billionaire. He absolutely is not. And now he's really I'm not about to be a billionaire. They're about to start seizing his properties. All of this. They, they, they're about to take Diddy through the wire. They're about to take Diddy through the wire. Um, let's read the other one. Let's read this one. That Tyrone Blackburn, Rod's lawyer, um, sent to the judge. Defendant Combs, these actions have compelled the plaintiff and his loved ones to file a police report. So um, I think of the 21st, um, Lil Rod filed and his ex-wife filed the police report <clears throat> on Diddy. Um, this writer has raised concerns surrounding the harassing behavior, and they doubled down and indicated that their harassing behavior will continue. Consequently, the plaintiff has reported these actions to the California, New York, and New Jersey state bars. Regarding defendants, Un uh, United Music Group, Lucian Green, is it Grange? And Motown Records, their representative has declined to engage with the writer's the writer, despite several emails requesting a call to discuss the plaintiff's claims. So Lucian has not responded. Motown has not responded, Barry Gordon M, to any of the things sent, the lawsuit basically at all. Um, they have not responded. He's, uh, sorry, he has sent multiple contradictory emails and letters filled with empty threats. He went so far as to misleadingly represent that he is his counsel to Mr. or sorry, Miss Ethi. I think that's Ethi Ethiopia. Is that is, is that her name? Lord. Um, a misrepresentation that was properly promptly discovered through discussions with Ethiopia actual counsel. So basically, Diddy. From what I'm gathering, Diddy was pretending to be Ethiopia. Is that her name? I believe, believe to be her counsel. So pretending to be her lawyer to do what? What? What was he saying? Like, was he telling her like, you need to not testify against Diddy? Like, what? What was? Diddy, you are crazy. You are psycho. Okay? Because, like, what, what? what, Why? Why? Like, she wouldn't call her lawyer. You know, so you call her basically off a number pretending to be her counsel or have somebody pretending to be her counsel or whatnot. And then she talks to her actual counsel. When she talks to them, they're gonna, she's going to expect them to be saying what you said. But if she talks to them and they're like, look at here, we didn't speak to you. Okay? We don't know what the you're talking about. But we didn't talk to you, okay? So it's like, what did you, what was he planning on gaining out of that? Because that's illegal. You can't do that. You can't do that. You're psycho. Like, what is wrong with you? Despite reminding him of his professional duty to engage with opposing counsel to seek a resolution on behalf, okay, so... Basically, he had his attorney call her and pretend to. Everybody crooked. Everybody crooked. Um, weird. He chose instead to hurl insults and boast about his legal experience spanning over 50 years. Wow. So, yeah, he has been threatening them and them, my girl. Um, this document here, this talks about um, the prince because y'all were talking about Prince Harry. Um, this document right here talks about. And this is a part of the lawsuit. It's just highlighted where um, it says underage, you know, girls to sign NDAs prior to entering the parties and prior to being owned. Yeah, okay. So it's, this is a lot. This is a whole lot. Okay. 
a whole lot. We pretty much talked about everything in the title. Um, yeah. So I think we're going to come back and talk about Prince Harry. I think that's what we're going to do. I think that's what we're going to do. Um, we're going to come back and we are going to discuss Prince Harry. We absolutely are. Thank you all so much for being here. Please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Shout out to us. We just said 128K. Woo! Um, and I'm a girl. So I love you guys. We will be back. Give me like an hour or so. And we will be back. Um, and we'll get into the Prince Harry tea um, and so much more. This is just the beginning, okay? Thank you all again for being here. Thank you all for the super stickers and super chats and liking the video, subscribing to the channel. I love you guys. I will see y'all when we return. Until then.